IDs and ID refs. Really, really important concept. Some students have a real hard time getting this and it takes them quite a while for it to sink in. So that's why I'd like to introduce it to you relatively early in the course and give you lots of time to think about it and lots of time to really start to get the implications of it. So the fundamental concept that we're talking about here is identity. What will uniquely and obviously and always identify a particular what? Well, there's lots of different answers to that question. The, the what that I'd like to start with is the person. What uniquely and obviously and definitely identifies you? So I have a few things here. There's this one. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's a passport, right? And what does a passport have that uniquely identifies you? Well, it has your face on it, but you know, that's, that's, that's not going to help much when someone's trying to locate exactly who you are. What it really has is a passport number. And that passport number is used by governments around the world to figure out who you are, to definitively, authoritatively um, identify you as a person. Well, it's not, that's not the only identifier we have. Here's another one. I don't know if you can see that. That's my driver's license. What does your driver's license have on it? Driver's license has a number on it. The ones in the state of Washington in the United States actually use your name, your last name, some initials, and then a unique number to identify you. Yet another number that's used to uniquely identify you. Here's another one. I have a health card. My health card has what's called a member number on it. Yet again, that member number is a unique identifier. It's no one else in the world has that number except me. And that can be used to identify me. That can be used to say it's Bob Boyko and no other person. Of course, there could be many Bob Boykos, but if there, and if there are, they're not going to have the same member number, they're not going to have the same passport number, they won't have the same um, identifier on their license. Finally, here's another one. Credit card. What does a credit card have? A credit card has an account number. All these ways of uniquely identifying me as an individual, as a person, as an entity, those are all unique identifiers. Now, key concept here. These are the unique identifiers. I hope that's not too hard to understand. That usually sinks in right about now that there's something called unique identifier. If you want to um, identify a person, that's what you're going to have to use. Now let's think about a more subtle concept. When I come into a country, they look at my passport, they scan my passport, and what happens? That identifier, my passport number, goes into one of their databases. When it's in their database, is it the unique ID? Yeah. But it's not exactly the same as the unique ID that's on my passport. It's a reference to the unique ID that's on my passport. My passport has the ID. The database of the country that I enter has, the, has the, the, a reference to that identifier. So we can have references to my identifier probably in all sorts of databases, some which I care to have it in and others which I may not care to have it in. But those identifiers are there and there are references to the number that's on my passport or on my driver's license or on my visa card or on my health card or whatever other identifiers I have. And they're used to say in this database, in the health database or in the government database or in the, the driver infraction database or wherever I may appear, those are references to the ID that I uniquely hold really in my pocket here. These are, all the, these are all the master copies, you might say. And the master copy is the ID, and all the slave copies, all the copies that are made of that ID are references to the ID. Okay, so we have two concepts here, the concept of an ID and the concept of a reference to an ID. So now let's move into more of the sphere that this course is about. This course isn't about entities that are people. This course is about entities that are information objects. And more specifically, what kind of information objects do we care about? Items. Information items, right? If you remember, every, every piece of information is an item. Every item belongs to a particular type. Though if, it has that, if that item has no other structure, it will have this. It will have an ID. And the ID will uniquely identify that item so that for all time, in all places, I can get back to that item. I can find that item. If I have the ID, all the information about the item is available. But I never actually have the ID itself, just like the government databases don't have my passport. They have a reference to my passport. <laughs> That's some skateboarders running by. They have a reference to my passport. And if I want to get information about an item of information, if I want to get, uh, if I want to get at an item of information in our database, I'm going to use a reference to that, to that item. 
Now, in XML, these two things, IDs and references to IDs, are called data types. If you assign the data type of an ID to some object, say some element or some attribute, then that ID will, be, uh, will have to obey certain rules. Rule number one, a very obvious rule, it has to be unique. That, I, that ID has to be unique among all IDs in that XML instance. In the XML instance, there may be no other, there may be no other IDs that have the same value. Okay, so we have the ID data type. Then we have the ID ref data type. The ID ref data type says, I am a reference to an ID. And if it's an ID ref data type, its value has to be another unique identifier in the database. If it's a, if it's a reference to an ID data type, then the value has to be a reference to some ID that is elsewhere in that instance. So you can only have the ID XYZ once in the instance as an ID, but you can have it an infinite number of times in the database as a reference to another ID. So that reference can be used multiple times to refer to the same item over and over and over again. Uh, so one other thing about IDs, IDs have to obey certain rules. An ID cannot begin with a numeral, that's just a rule that you have to follow. An ID can't have any spaces, it can't have any special characters like stars and question marks and that sort of thing. So if you follow the rule that you'll always start your IDs with uh, letters, and they have no spaces in them, then you'll be fine and, and all your IDs will work. An ID reference, on the other hand, the only, uh, the only thing that it has to follow, the only rule that it has to obey, is that that same value appears somewhere else in the instance as an ID. So, here's something that might take quite a while to sink in. In an instance, there can only be one element or attribute that has the ID data type that is the value XYZ. For any particular value, it can only be in one element or attribute that carries the ID data type, and it can only be, so it can only be in one place. However, if it carries the ID ref data type, it has to be a valid ID, XYZ for example, but it can be in as many elements and attributes as you care to put it in. An ID ref can be repeated over and over and over again, just like I can only have one passport. I'm not going to have two passports. But my passport number, the reference to my passport number, can be in any number of places. If it's an ID data type in an XML instance, it can only be in one place. If it's an ID ref data type, then it could be in many places. The same value could be in many places, and in each case, of course, it points to the same item. So back around to the beginning. What's the idea here? The idea is we want a unique identifier. We want a unique label, something that's always going to get us back to the item, the information item of interest. So we assign every information item an ID. That ID can go in an attribute, it could go in an element. In this class, you'll usually see it in attributes. And that ID is a unique string, beginning with a letter and no spaces and no punctuation in that. Um, and it uniquely identifies that object. Then, when there are other places in the instance that I want to refer back to that object, back to that passport, I use an ID ref data type. And that ID ref data type says my value points to a unique ID that's in this instance. There you have it. So you might have to come back around to this a few times. Don't, don't fret about re-listening to this, to this lecture or doing some of, the, some of the questions and coming back around to it until you really get that idea because it's the fundamental idea of entityhood, both as people and also as information items. Entityhood is really defined by having a unique identifier, an authoritative reference or excuse me an authoritative value for who you are what you are and how we'll go back and find you